why do you feel it's important not to accept campaign contributions? <clears throat> well, I uh, really believe that's what's wrong with America, that uh, there's uh, somebody, uh, every, uh, not every politician, I suspect, but basically every politician has a war chest. Um, <clears throat> And they, and they get their money from somebody. And those somebodies uh, become friends once they become um, elected, once the uh, party who takes that uh, money uh, gets elected. And I, I think that uh, too many favors go to these types of special interests that uh, contribute to campaigns that um, really, in my opinion, corrupt uh, a system and make it substantially different than what the Founding Fathers ever expected uh, of representative democracy. Given the fact that uh, some of the individuals that you're up against will be spending <coughs> hundreds, of, hundreds of thousands, probably through the primary and millions through, through the general, um, what are your expectations? That do you feel are you are you running to fill the seat, or are you running to get your message out? I'm running to fill the seat and to get my message out. Um, I I'm not foolish enough to think that without spending a dime uh, on advertising and whatever you need to do to get elected, um, and I've already spent a, a few dimes, by the way, and quite frankly, they're with the Times Leader, but we won't. This, this won't be shown to any of your competitors, will it? Uh, um, I took one little ad out so far, but uh, anything that I take out will come out of my pocket, and uh, I've spent probably in the neighborhood of $1,000 so far. Uh, I would anticipate that I'll spend several more thousand. I'd like to cap it at somewhere around 5000 if I can. But uh, I have to make good use of every dime that I spend because uh, it's coming out of my family and it's coming out of uh, uh, you know our resources uh, for the future and so um, I don't I think I still have an opportunity because of vehicles such as uh, what you're providing here and what has been provided to me in the normal press and I will take advantage of those uh, I just don't uh, think that if I I think that if I take money from the machine, then I have uh, as much opportunity as any other candidate to become part of the machine. Tell us about your strategy then. Who are you talking to? What methods are you using to get your message out? Uh, I'm mostly using my website right now. Um, I'm uh, in the process of evaluating opportunities to speak. Uh, and. I think that will be one of my best opportunities when um, I can ferret through, uh, and I have, I've, I've actually got my message down. So uh, I understand where I am, not that I didn't understand that before, but I've actually uh, put words to my thoughts uh, and I'm actually prepared uh, for extemporaneous meetings and I'm prepared uh, to have speeches that I could give um, at the uh, almost a moment's notice and and I'm just waiting for the call quite frankly hopefully uh, somebody will be calling you know have you ever run for an elected office of, of any kind before well if you say any kind I was uh, vice president no I, you know quite frankly I forget the I was president of the IBM club I was <laughs> I was uh, in my day at IBM and I, I was quite the president I can assure you we did lots of things that uh, that the IBM club um, uh, the IBM company is a very conservative company, and they uh, uh, they sometimes uh, smiled and sometimes frowned upon the kinds of things that we did. Uh, they were fun for the kids and fun for the people, and that was what I was concerned about, and I took the heat. So the club was for employees of the It was an employee club. Uh, in a particular region? Yes, Scranton. I, I have been, um, I spent two years in New York and 21 years with IBM in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh, have you voted for or otherwise supported Congressman Kandorsky in the past? Yes. <clears throat> uh, I read the, uh, um, something you said, as good as he was for northeastern Pennsylvania in the early years. Can you tell me what you mean by that and where you think things begin to change? 
Well, when I began to notice was his uh, alignment uh, with, uh, in the, uh, really in the last two years. Um, I, um, I saw uh, the election when he ran against, um, in, the, in, in the general at least, against uh, Mr. Barletta. Um, and I thought that because Mr. Barletta had such a strong stance against uh, immigration that, that he was going to overcome uh, Paul Kanchorsky because he's been around so long. Uh, but in fact, uh, Kanchorsky's position on immigration apparently is not that much different than, um, than Mr. Barletta's, so he, uh, he managed to squeak through, in my opinion. I mean, he's, he didn't win by the, the normal margin. But this last time, I've written the congressman a number of times, and what I, what I received back uh, is, is certainly nothing that he wrote, and it, it's, it, they, it doesn't answer the question. It typically tells me why I'm wrong and why he's going to do what he's going to do. You've also written that you, you're running, I think I'm quoting here, I'm running mostly because I can't stand politicians. Uh, that being said, how would you <laughs> function in Washington? I mean, would you, would you be perceived as a novelty? If you well, perhaps. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that this year uh, we can have as close to as many as 435 uh, new faces in the House of Representatives. It's not a given that uh, that those who have been in office continue to be in office, um, and that uh, certainly, if that something like that would would were to occur, and this is the year, if it were ever to occur, this is the year. This is the first year I've ever seen in my life where everybody, people who otherwise were never interested in what was going on in Washington, are very interested. And so I, I conceivably, I can see uh, a substantial portion of Congress being replaced so that I'm not an anomaly.